Look at you can see that bubbling. Please don't light me on fire. I'm not gonna light you on fire. Smack it. <laughs> I told you I was gonna hit. <laughs> Say. Oh gosh. Handle with care. This is hydrochloric acid. Oh my gosh. I think today's a chemistry experiment. And if it's a chemistry experiment today, then I'm probably gonna have Elizabeth on because she is my fellow mad scientist. Elizabeth, are you back there? Yep. All right, come on, let's have some fun. Are we gonna have some fun today? Yeah, we're definitely we're gonna, gonna, gonna have, have some fun. Some. We should probably throw our hair back for this, shouldn't we? Yeah. Taking off my jewelry. Yeah. So you definitely need to take your ring off. While we pull our hair back. Um, we are going to be doing six different destructive tests today. So this is stuff that I used to do out in the field a lot, but unfortunately, because most of the time we are dealing with things that you do not want to break, I am not allowed to do them. Like expensive specimens. Like expensive specimens and things like that. But so I have brought a bunch of samples that we don't care. We about. don't care if we break them. And in some cases, we specifically have them just to break them. So this is going to be By the way, fun. your eyelashes are so pretty. No, oh, thank you. Your eyelashes look like my eyelashes when I wear fake eyelashes. <laughs> you know what's a shame? What? My brothers are better. It's annoying. <laughs> so destructive tests are, are great. One, because they're fun. Yeah. Number two, because we can learn a lot. So for instance, the fizz test. Tell us about that. Okay. So with fizz, you're basically testing to see if there's calcium carbonate in it. So when you're out in the field and you're looking at a rock and you're not really sure if it's like a quartzite or if it's a limestone, one is silica mm -hmm. and oxygen and the other one is calcium carbonate. Right, and we wanna so know. So we wanna know the difference. Calcium carbonate plus your HCl, the reaction produces CO2. So that's where you get your fizz. Here we've got two different rocks. One will fizz and one won't. So let's do it. So we're gonna get some paper plates. Okay, ready? The reason we're getting the plates and the water and everything is so that, you know, we can just be as safe as possible. So with the 10% diluted HCl, you definitely never want to get this near your mouth, your eyes. It's in a dropper. We're not squirting it on anything. We're it's, being safe. We're being very safe. But hey guys, don't try any of this at home. Um, leave the crazy stuff up to Elizabeth and I. We've been doing a lot of research and we know the safety precautions. So I actually had to break these earlier. You need a fresh surface. So if, if I'm out in the field and I see what I think is a big piece of limestone. I actually go up and I break a piece off so that I can use that new broken piece because as they're exposed to the environment you'll actually have a much weaker reaction and sometimes that can give you a false negative meaning that there won't really be any fizzing going on. So we want the best possible surface for us to do this experiment. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna hold it. I don't want you to. You'll just, be okay. I'm worried about you. Oh. What about, I've, I've done tongs? this so many times. Or it's it is a-okay. So as long as you're very controlled so here, we're taking our HCl. You just take a little bit and you do a little tiny bit right on the surface. So if you guys notice, okay, there is absolutely no fizzing. And not any on my hands. Then with this guy, again, a little bit of HCl. There we go. And you got fizzing. So, so here, this has calcium carbonate in it. Yep, so you can see that we are creating a gas. So this is in fact, that the limestone. Is, look at you can see that bubbling. All right, let's put these in water and let's move on to our next destructive test. All right, test number two. Tell yeah. me what we're doing. So numero dos, we are going to do a traditional scratch test. Okay, I think we've talked about this before. No, I'm thinking streak test. Never mind. You have done streak. We have we've done, not done. We've been streaking. <laughs> wow. Scratch tells us the relative hardness of the mineral that we are looking at. Many of you know the Mohs hardness scale, mm -hmm. or at least you've heard of it. So with this, you are actually taking a sort of everyday household objects and you are performing destructive testing on different pieces of mineral. I'm gonna put these in order real quick for our hardness. This is just a good spread of just some various hardnesses of different minerals. So here we've got our stainless steel nail. And so that is at a six and a half. Mm -hmm. Our iron nail is at a five and a half. Our glass plate, this is also at a five and a half. And then we've got our two ceramic plates that are at seven and a half and our copper pennies at three and a half. And then our fingernail is two and a half. What we're gonna do first, so this is corundum. Do you remember the Mohs hardness Nine. number? There you go, awesome. So 
I'm not scratching it. So that means it's harder. Well, actually, I am leaving a mark. So if you guys can see it, I'm leaving a mark. But notice that it's a metallic mark. It means that my nail is actually rubbing off onto so that means the corundum. The corundum's harder so, than my nail. Yes, we can come to our scratch plate. And oh. nothing there. That's a horrible noise. And then, again, I am basically grinding off parts of this plate. So if you were to find this randomly in the field, and it's just a chunk, you'd be able to tell immediately Easy. that you have stuff that is more hard than your plates, than your nail. Then that really narrows down what minerals you can actually expect it to That's be. That's really cool. So then we are gonna go to our orthoclase. So this Orthoclase. should really scratch it. And I can actually, yep, so sometimes you, you can go. feel it. You are leaving a mark on it. And that's powdering it just a little bit. Like if you have a really pretty crystal, you really don't want to do this test. You are grinding off parts of it. So fluorite, notice how the tip of that has now turned white. So I've actually so scratched it. it off. With this guy, there's really nothing happening to it. That copper penny is just a half a degree less hard than your fluorite. But what's cool about this guy is I can take my fingernail and just go over it. Oh my gosh. And it. scratch it. Cool. That so, was fun. Yeah. Okay, what's our next test? All right, guys, so now we're gonna move on to a streak test. And this is different than a scratch test. So with a scratch test, you're actually scratching the material. With a streak test, we take a white ceramic plate and we basically drag the gemstone over the plate. And the color of that streak on the plate helps us get an indication of, of what we're actually looking at. Yeah. So I've and got it's... some famous minerals for okay. their streak. This is something that pretty much everybody probably uses on a daily basis. This is what a natural piece of graphite looks like. Hey, fun fact, graphite is only made of carbon, mm -hmm. just like diamond is only made of carbon. The difference is how the atoms are bound together. Yep. Pretty cool, huh? It makes an excellent example for streak. This is cove light. And this is hematite. And this is hematite. And, this and is then pyrite. we have a piece of pyrite. So each one of these will leave a different streak on the plate. And if you're a gemologist in the field and you see something you're not quite sure, this is just one little data point that gives you a clue to what you're looking at. Yep. So should we start? Yeah. Okay. There you go. So of course the expected. Okay. Yeah, so this was graphite. This is graphite and I'm gonna do the, you said covalite? Yep. All right, there's covalite. Um, if you guys wanna learn more about what we're talking about on the show today, don't forget to look above Elizabeth's left shoulder. We'll pop up the links on screen. So we are gonna hit um, several specimens today and you can learn more through those videos. Yeah. All right, hematite. And then we've got be red. hematite. Okay, so and then the red hematite. pyrite right here. And then pyrite. I didn't so, know this one had a streak. Oh God, that's bad. That's nails on the chalkboard. <laughs> so pyrite's a little harder, but I'm doing this because it's funny. Um, Stop, so, please. <laughs> Stop. Okay. So what's interesting about the pyrite that I think you will find really funny. Ew. Pyrite also smells bad. It's made out of iron sulfide, so what you're actually smelling like is sulfur. sulfur. Ew, I hate that yeah, smell. So you're sulfur? actually smelling sulfur. Which smells like rotten eggs. Let's move on to test number four. Is that where we are? Yeah, we're at four. Let's, hit, let's do it. So we have fire. We have fire. We no longer just use rudimentary tools. We're we now the, use fire. We're not at the kids' table anymore. Okay, so tell us what we're doing with fire. Okay, so. Everybody has heard of Amber and Copal on this show. And for at those some of point. you who are not familiar with it, Amber is basically ancient tree sap and Copal is younger ancient tree sap. The biggest difference is that you have something called volatiles within this organic matter. Well, so with Copal, the volatiles are still there. And so as it ages, the amber is actually releasing all of that out. So those volatiles aren't there anymore. So one of the surefire ways to tell the difference between a piece of copal and a piece of amber, and especially when they look so similar, mm -hmm. is to actually take a hot needle and poke them and smell it. I have never actually done this test before. I'm really excited. excited. All right, let's do the fire. So I was actually saving this for this video. Now let's let's do this, I'm ready. Okay. Please don't light me on fire. I'm not gonna light you on fire. Um, You're my friend, I'm not gonna light you on fire. Ready? On purpose I'm is the words I'm not going there. to light you on fire. This is literally a paper clip that we just bent. It's getting really hot. There. Really pretty red. There we go. How much longer so, should we leave it on? You know, I don't know. We're just gonna do this. So it's hot and we're going to now 
take this piece of amber. Whoop. Do we need more? Again. Yep. There we go. Did you see that? I saw smoke. Should we do it one more time? So, and we're gonna try to do this a little bit. Just Woo, do you smell that? That smells like, I just got a whiff of something that smelled like oh, trees. It definitely smells like, it definitely smells like trees. Um, so it's not as good as what people had described. And good, good safety chemistry precautions, you waft. That is not nearly as good as I thought it'd be. Oh no, let's move on. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's funny. Um, that's not the okay. candle I have in my, my No, that was not no. the candle I had in my head. Do, 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 do. Okay, ready? Let's do it. All right, so Copal right here, it's gonna do the same thing. There you go. Oh, look at that, Whoa. it like fizzed. Holy cow, oh, it's resin. Wow, that went really deep. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Can we get it to the Okay, other so side? that actually smells way better than the amber. <laughs> that smells like a conifer. It like, really does. Like this, this smells more, okay, I guess I hate to say it, like more resiny. Oh my God, look at that. Okay, so, ooh, we made, we made sap, okay. All right, this kind of makes sense that that would smell better, more like trees because, because it's, younger, it's younger and it had, has, has had less time to like get gross. Well, it, get gross. That was disgusting But smelling. it's had less time to outgas, so, Essentially here, like you still have some of the oils from the tree in it. Mm -hmm. You still have a lot of that other stuff. A bit more, it, it's younger, it's less. It does smell like a tree. It does, I think it's because it's less stable. Okay. Yeah, so, well, it's it's got the volatiles in it, which right. basically means your organic matter that gives that tree that tree smell. We're done with the lighter. We're done with the fire. That was fun. That was really, that was really fun. fun. So we've got to put our safety glasses on because we will be breaking stuff. Let's pose so. for the camera so this can be the thumbnail. Let's look cute for the camera. Throwing up. <laughs> Three. All right, that was cute. Okay, let's break something. Okay, so. This is test number five. Test number five, we are talking about. Fracture. Fracture, so in gem school. You look at the fracture on a stone because if it's conchoidal, which basically means it looks like concentric circles, that is one way to identify a stone versus if it just looks like splintery or what else? Granular. Or granular, splintery. Or step-like. We are first going to deal with our chert, which is, basically a microcrystalline variety of quartz that's like really opaque and just kind of, I hate to say ugly, but it's kind of ugly. We're going to just whack it. Let's go. Ready? Three, okay. two, one. I'm gonna, you, you Put your hands. sacrifice your fingers. Three, two, one. <laughs> I told you I was gonna hit it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this is actually more conchoidal. This little piece fit right there and I am so glad I had on them. I, I know. So I didn't expect you to just go for the middle of it. I didn't go for the middle, I went for the side. You're supposed to just gently tap on it and then go no, for it. No, I just it. smacked it once and it, a little <laughs> bit broke off. I have a feeling the obsidian might be a little easier. Just smack, um, just, we just smack just it hard once. smack it, okay. Just smack it, go. See? So, oh, go. there, that's perfect conchoidal fracture. Oh, those are some really pretty snowflakes. I know, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so snowflake obsidian is called snowflake obsidian because you have the black background and the white splotches actually kind of look like snowflakes. Yeah. One of my favorite stones, I think it's very cool, but number two, you ha you see this like almost perfect conchoidal fracture and it looks like these concentric circles. This is so weird, I'm such a nerd, but conchoidal fracture is my favorite fracture. We actually have a piece of marble here. See how it looks like powdered, like sugar? So Like when, it really looks like sugar. So, so granular, this is called granular. And you can actually feel the grit. Do you want to hit Why it? Not, Just one here. smack, one smack. Okay. Go. Nope. No, it actually. Did it break? So you Good can job. see a crack forming right there. Jump. There we go. So <laughs> then you've got this really beautiful, fresh, granular fracture. It looks like sugar. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. And then you can also get step-like fracture. Unfortunately, I really didn't have a good stone to break that I wouldn't have cried over that had step-like fracture. But just so you all know, a stone that's really great to see it is feldspar. It basically just looks like little nice stair steps going down the side of a stone. So with the kyanite, we're can actually do gonna one? do the littler one. Three, two. No, no, I'm too afraid. So, <laughs> What was funny about that is it actually Oh, cracked. it actually cracked. There we go. So here, if you guys can see on the ends of it, it appears to have this wood-like texture on it. And that's where we get the term splintery fracture. 
and there's not a ton of minerals that actually have this kind of fracture and especially in the gemstone world if I was to see a blue stone with splintery fracture I would 99% of the time just right off the bat go oh well, this is this is probably kyanite should we move on to number six so I think we should move on to number six so we've had enough fun with cracking things all right so number six is going to be Cleavage. Cleavage. So cleavage is different from fracture. Fracture is the way that a stone breaks in a regular fashion when force is applied. Okay. Cleavage is actually an atomic weakness in the structure of the crystal. When you have something that's called perfect cleavage, it basically means that it's really fairly easy to break it apart. This is mica. You can see these really awesome, basically these flat lines going across it. And so those are all actually internal cleavage planes. And so what we're gonna do Ugh. is cleave it apart. Okay, so that's a really good example of cleavage, but there's a reason that cleavage is important in gemology. And that's number one, when you are cutting stones, uh, the lapidary is gonna wanna know what's the cleavage like because that's gonna determine how they actually cut the stone. So for example, sphalerite is known for having very perfect very cleavage. perfect cleavage and that makes it really hard because you have to be super careful when you're cutting it one wrong move by the wheel or by the lapidary could mean this or just too much pressure or too much pressure yeah exactly the stone could just and then you'd have multiple stones and, and sometimes you don't want that can we break these <laughs> all right there rambo these are actually man-made fluorite octahedrons. I did not know they were man-made, very cool. So what's interesting though is a lot of times you can take a look at a piece of fluorite, you can identify where there is a cleavage plane. Yep. So if you look into this stone, you can see that there's actually kind of a cloudiness in this area right here if you look in it. And it means that if I hit right here, there's going to be a break that occurs all the way around it in this direction. And so this is how people actually make these fluorite octahedrons. So if you have a broken crystal that comes out of the mine, you don't just chuck it. You actually have an opportunity to make it into something that is actually still desirable and still worth trying to get to market. Do you want to be the one to try yes. to smack this? Okay. Of course I do. Yes. What so corner? This, right this there? Edge. Got it. This is not working. <laughs> okay, you try. I failed. <laughs> Oh! It actually broke on the back side. Oh, oh. Okay. So here, you can already see that we've got most of another octahedron formed at the top and then even here at the bottom. So depending on how this breaks, we may be able to make another fluorite octahedron. Oh, hit it harder. Yeah, you gotta hit it harder than that, Alyssa. Smack it, just like. <laughs> okay, I wanna try it now. Okay. Come on, he man it. Oh, well, so. it exploded. It exploded. <laughs> I mean, that is technically a little bit of a offset octahedron. So yeah, good job. We sort of succeeded. <laughs> All right, guys, I think Elizabeth and I have had our fun as mad scientists today. I'm ready to get these glasses off. They're kind of killing my vibe. Okay. I think they're fun. I think they're fun. Um, okay, time for us to take off our glasses, put the chunks of fluorite away, and it's time for you to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. We are gonna have, we're, let's, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna be mad scientists again. Oh yeah. Maybe sometime we'll blow things up. Is there anything we can blow up? What do you, what do you think about that? It makes me a little nervous. All right, makes me a little nervous too. <laughs> so we're gonna go talk about that, and thanks again for watching, and send Elizabeth a thank you. It is always a gift to have you on the channel. I appreciate Aww. it. And we will be back again for some more fun. See you guys later. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Should we hit one more time? Wait, you wanna... You... What do you wanna do? Do you wanna break more? <laughs>